Good morning. My name is Roger Goff. I work for Data Direct Networks. Um, unlike it says in your program, I'm not Chris Myhill. Chris Myhill's over here. Um, and I changed the topic, too. So, uh, you know, kind of appreciate Earl's flexibility in uh, what we want to talk about. But this morning, uh, I want to introduce an idea to, that some of you may have heard of and, and talk a little bit about the details of how this is really going to change how you design the I.O. of a system. Uh, so DDN's Infinite Memory Engine, that's our commercial product, but it's really about burst buffers and beyond what you can, you can do with those and how that's going to change the world. Um, and, and I'll start out by saying that there, there are limitations to parallel file systems today, which we all rely on to get our work done, that just cannot be solved by adding more hard drives to the file system. It, it just won't work. And, and so some of these things come to mind, uh, dealing with POSIX semantics, uh, and dealing with the locking and unlocking of, of files. Uh, and really where that gets to is thread contention. Uh, when you start talking about uh, millions of threads running simultaneously in a cluster, and we're not very far from that at all, we're in tens of thousands now, probably hundreds of thousands of threads, that contention is something that parallel file systems just won't manage well. Um, latency to hard drives uh, also it doesn't go away. We've run parallel file systems on pure SSDs. Well, they have the best latency in the world, right? Doesn't solve uh, latency to data issues when, when you insert those. So that's not enough. Um, fragmented I.O. problems, uh, data that's not well aligned, lots of random data, misaligned data inside of applications. Uh, these are things that parallel file systems grapple with and were not designed to handle, arguably. Arguably, they were designed to handle large streaming I.O. And it turns out when we look at our HPC workloads, the vast majority of those workloads are not large, in, large streaming I.O. So how do we deal with those patterns? And then, of course, the last problem of uh, DRAM is very expensive, and some of our problems are, are just plain large, and they will not fit in memory. And uh, if I have to drop from memory down to spinning disk, even if it's a fast parallel file system, that's a huge hit. Uh, so, so how do we overcome some of those things? And the real, uh, the, the technology that's being brought forward here, and this is an emerging technology that uh, a number of vendors are working on, so I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that DDN is the only one working in this space, um, but uh, it's this concept of burst buffers, which is handling those transient workloads that are very I.O. intensive, um, that are, are short-lived, maybe don't even need to have any longer life beyond uh, this short period of time, like a checkpoint, for example. Um, uh, and out of core I.O. fits into those as well. So there's a number of technologies come about that will address the two things on the left, uh, that idea of checkpoints, those interim calculation values, that out of core I.O. Uh, DDN with IME goes a couple of steps further and works to optimize your parallel file system as well by automatically reordering some of those nasty I.O. patterns into something that turns into a full stripe write. Um, which will ob ob obviously fix a lot of our issues with our parallel file systems, overcome some of the POSIX locking issues. Uh, so where do these burf burst buffers go? Uh, and it goes in between your compute and your parallel file system. So some burst buffer technologies are going to hang off of your parallel file system, but they're not really going to talk, or, or hang off your compute, rather, and they're not going to talk to your parallel file system. IME is going to go between, and we will funnel all I.O. through this uh, this layer, and what we're going to build is appliances of these very low latency, very large capacity devices that we will virtualize into a single pool or namespace that can be shared by all of your compute nodes. So not only can we do these burst buffer type operations like a checkpoint, um, we can share I.O. within the buffer across the nodes in the cluster. So how does this change the world? Well, if we look at things today and you've got a very large problem to solve, you end up buying more compute nodes than you really need because you're counting on a, a great deal of I.O. wait space. Uh, and so your nodes are sitting idle, not doing computation. Uh, maybe 30% uh, of your time could be spent waiting uh, on I.O. inside your environment. Um, we over-provision our file systems to handle those burst loads. Uh, and as a result, uh, you end up with a lot more storage than maybe you really need to solve your problem. The only throughput comes through spindles, right? It's spindles and spindle count. Uh, and more and more of them is what's required to get more throughput. Um, so what will happen after uh, technologies like IME take on the market is uh, if I reduce uh, your I.O. wait time across your cluster, that means I can get the same amount of work done with less nodes. 
or more work done with the same number of nodes that I already have. Uh, I will also be able to shrink the performance of your parallel file system, so really move the equation from counting on performance to come from uh, IME and use your parallel file system as a very massive capacity engine. Um, there will be some loads that aren't going to be able to use a burst buffer, so you'll still need that parallel file system, but it won't have to be quite as fast, which means less arrays sitting out there in the background, less connection points to your network, less power consumption, uh, and less points of management inside your environment. Um, so I view this as a very disruptive way in how you're going to think about designing clusters going forward. You're going to move from designing performance in the file system to performance in a burst buffer, and then uh, you'll worry about capacity mostly in your file system on the back end. Uh, and, and thank you. That's it. Okay. So uh, when will this product be available? So uh, IME will come out in its first rev this fall. We, should, we expect to release it just prior to supercomputing on the current schedule. So with regard to disruptiveness, DDN also sells storage systems. Yes, we do. <laughs> okay. Um, if I buy one of these and a bunch of storage, is it going to save me any money for the corresponding performance? Yeah, so, uh, you, you know, so the net of it is uh, we think so um, because you will be buying less controllers on the back end. Yes, these burst buffer technologies are relatively expensive today. They're based on non-volatile memory PCI type cards, which are pretty expensive. Um, but the reduction in number of controllers on the back end should make up for that. Um, there is the possibility long time down the road, some people shoot me for saying this, that um, we might even be able to move away from an expensive parallel file system back end to something that is uh, more like an expandable distributed object store at much lower cost per terabyte. So in the end, yes, I believe the answer is it will cost you uh, about the same or possibly less, and what you'll get for that is more compute for your money. Yeah, very, very nice. Uh, you know, I, I'm not not certain about the disruptiveness, but uh, you know, again, very nice. Thank you. Thank you.